What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, how you doing? Good, man. What a week for content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wanted to see Top Gun this weekend, but we had a lot of stuff going on. Um, so I'm going to see it next week with my wife. My wife told me to go see it, but I want to see it with her because we enjoy that movie a lot. So I'll wait till, till next weekend to go see it. But Brian, you saw it. And it's pretty much what we've been hoping it would be based on what people have said. Um, and it being just top Tom Cruise and him being a perfectionist and making sure that we, the audience are entertained. Brian, did he do that? Did Top Gun live up to what people have been saying about the movie? Um, what are your thoughts? Spoiler free review, everyone. Spoiler free. Yeah, look, I mean, this is one where the, I think the numbers don't lie. So 97% Rotten Tomatoes, 99% audience score, A plus cinema score, on track to break the more Memorial Day weekend for record for box office. Um, and the movie is every bit as good as that. And then some, uh, it's, it's an amazing achievement. It, it, it just, to me, like it's, it's the kind of movie that when you make a sequel 35 years later, it shouldn't be possible to do this as skillfully as they did. But I think what I can say at the top is it is the perfect reminder of why movie theaters won't disappear. Because no matter how good a TV you have and how a good sound system you have, you can't replicate what this ride is like when you started. Uh, and that's the whole point, right? And we, we've reached this weird point in the world where Tom Cruise is in some ways like the last man between, you know, the superhero genre and, and 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 the complete domination of the body. It's basically like the Fast and Furious franchise and whatever Tom Cruise is working on are like the, the things that yeah. are outside of comic book lore that are driving box office. But I think this movie is that. It, it is the ultimate, you know, you kick back for two hours. You are wowed by the visuals. I think you're legitimately moved by the characters, which I think is probably the biggest upside surprise of this whole mm -hmm. process. And man, you just walk out of the theater energized. Like I will say like, you know, I saw it Friday at noon with the wife. Uh, we couldn't wait to do it, but like, it was a long week. Like I was, I had been on a flight, like I was tired and worked and like, I was pretty tired going to the movie. And like, no joke, I walked out of the movie and I was like, did a workout, did a walk. Like I was fired up. Like I'm serious. If, I, I, I'm not saying I would have enlisted if the Navy <laughs> was outside the theater, but like, it was just that kind of thing where you just walk out happy. Like you're just like fired up and ready to do something. And I think that's, you know, that's all you can, that's like what you want. Like when you go to the movies, you want an experience and you want to leave feeling like you had a great time. And I think they, they achieved it, and I think they achieved it in a way, Pablo, that's really cool, which is you don't need to have seen the original to enjoy this. Like, I was looking at my audience. It was an older audience, uh, mm -hmm. or at least not a lot of kids. But there were teenagers there. Uh, you know, so the kids between, like, 10 and, you know, 10 and 18, a lot, a lot of kids in that range. And, like, I think some of them probably have never seen the original. And I think that's okay. Like, I think you, you would still enjoy this movie. I think there are parts of it where if you have seen the original, there's a deeper meaning. There are a lot of winks to you. Like um, there's a lot of acknowledgement of like, we understand not just what Top Gun the movie was, but we understand what Top Gun the phenomenon became. There's a mm -hmm. lot of that. There's a lot of like, we get it. We're in on the joke. We get it. We're not going to poke fun at it, but we're actually going to just be very true to the spirit of that. And then we're going to take, take this in directions of maybe to a you didn't expect but b add some real weight uh to the film so you know i can't say enough good things about it you know is it gonna win an oscar no it's not like it's not gonna be a best picture nominee but it is the ultimate like crowd pleasing ride where like you get done with it and you're like i'm ready to go again 
and I want to go again. So like in that sense, it is truly like a five star movie experience. And wow. I would give it five stars for what it was meant to be. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I've been dying to see this film, but I, again, I want to wait for someone who equally enjoys the movie uh, as much as I do. And so I'm going to wait till next week. But um, I'm I'm very excited to see this film based on what you said and 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 many others have said. Um, was there similar sort of feedback when certain characters came on screen in terms of excitement and the oohs and ahs? Were there any moments in the film similar to what a I would say Infinity War Endgame sort of reaction. <laughs> That's a high bar. I think there are definitely there are definitely some very crowd pleasing moments. Uh, there are definitely moments where even if you kind of know the outcome of that particular sequence or scene, you're still gripping your seat because the execution and the way it's built up is second to none. And you know, and Cruz is so fully invested in everything he does that like he sucks you in. Like you just can't help but be in the cockpit with Maverick, like hanging on every move. I will say that th there's a very, what I said, I was surprised by the emotion. I think, so Cruz in this movie is probably better than you would expect as, an, as a performance. Mm -hmm. I think what he's become, or at least what I associate, he's become more stuntman than actor, I feel like, in a lot of his projects over the last 10 years. Like what he does, if you if you watch Mission Impossible from Ghost Protocol onward, mm -hmm. he doesn't have a ton of lines. If you really break it down, it's a lot of times the, the villain or the supporting cast has more lines than he does. Yeah, But he's so physical in those movies that that's what makes him the star. Mm -hmm. But this is a guy who, you know, did a few good men, did Jerry Maguire, did Magnolia, was he was nominated for an Oscar, born on the 4th of July, like, it's in there, it, or at least it was collateral, another, like, and I think this movie, he went into that well, more than you would expect to, especially for people who did see the original, to get you to believe what the character of Pete Mitchell has been doing for 35 years since the original. And there's, I don't want to give it away because I think from an emotional standpoint, there's a very emotional scene. If you have seen the original where they bring back a certain character from the original and the two of them share a one-on-one -on -one kind of five minute scene on screen as a way, as a bit of closure. And you're just kind of like, Cruz in that moment is like, he, it is like, it's 1989 again. Like he is back in, you know, full emotion. He's not, you know, the action star. It's the human cruise that used to be there a long time ago. And, and it's a really powerful scene. So I was, and there's a couple of those in this film where like, you're like, oh, I didn't know he still had that in the bag. And it's well written, it's well acted. Um, and so I think, yeah, I think, I think that's the part that caught me off guard is like, I knew the cast was great, right? Like. Jennifer Connelly is probably overqualified to be the female lead. John Hamm is probably overqualified to be the stereotypical, like he's James Tolkien. He's the bald admiral from the first one, basically yeah. the same type of character, right? Which is a pretty cliche character, mm -hmm. but he plays it very well. Ed Harris is in the movie for a very short span of time, playing a pretty cliche type of character, but it's Ed Harris. So the yeah. scene works. And so, I think the, and the, I think they did a really good job and I, and I will talk about it as it relates to our favorite genre. The pilots are really well cast in this movie. They did a nice job of finding a next generation that had some chemistry, had charisma, and you didn't feel like when they were on screen with Cruz, it was like a complete mismatch. Like okay. he definitely owns the screen, but like when it's him versus Miles Teller, Miles Teller has been nominated for an Oscar. Like he is not a bad actor. Like he mm -hmm. can stand there and, you know, emotion for emotion, you know, go a couple rounds with Tom Cruise and it's not unbelievable. So I think they did a really nice job of casting. I personally think a lot of these names, 
Now, Miles Teller, as we know, ill-fated turn as Reed Richards in the 2015 Fantastic Four. But when you look at, when you watch this movie, watch the pilots with an eye toward who do you think these guys and girl, because Monica Barbaro is awesome as Phoenix, could be in a superhero movie? Because I think you're going to see most, if not all of them, Get cast, cast for somewhere in the next five to ten years. <laughs> they just have that energy. There's a lot of diversity, right? So you have kind of different races represented. You obviously have different genders represented uh, and a lot of different personalities. I think there's a lot of potential here. These are people all between the ages of like 25 and 33. And so like they're in the sweet spot now. Like, you know, I don't know if it's X-Men. Like, I don't know if it's Fantastic Four. Like, I don't know if it's the next gen of event, young Avengers or Avengers like DC. Like I, I, I just was seeing these people and I'm like, yeah, I can see it. Like a couple of these people are going to be showing up on your screen uh, in that capacity sometime soon. So, yeah, I can't say enough about that. And then, look, I mean, the visuals are what you'd expect them to be. Uh, I think one of the things I was confident in going in is Joe Kaczynski, probably one of the lesser known, but just amazing technicians working today. Like whatever you think of Tron Legacy, whatever you think of movies like Oblivion, they are beautiful movies to look at, I think. Yeah. Um, it's a guy who has a real style. Um, and when you marry that with, they got the full help of the military again, you get some just absolutely sick practical shots from inside the jets, outside yeah. the jets. But they did something really smart, which was they didn't try to beat for beat recreate the dog fighting of the first one. Because I don't know that that would have necessarily worked. So you probably yeah. gathered from the trailer, there's a lot of low level flying. Like it's kind of like an air to ground. There's a lot of air to ground, not just air to air. So that I yeah. thought was a really nice like update that they did to kind of make it feel different. different. I, think, I think you'll actually be reminded of a certain other sci-fi classic when you listen to the mission and what they have to do i think it'll okay. come to mind what they where they got the inspiration from but it's just really cool to watch and um i'll get back to kaczynski in a second but i i i walked out of the theater and i and i had this like light bulb go off that i'm now we're going to be officially on the on the train for kaczynski to do a certain something for us in the next uh in the next five years but no i like i said it's just see it on the biggest screen possible because there are moments where you're just like up in the sky and it's just awesome to watch and let me ask this yeah. okay let me ask this i have to ask this because i need having said all the things you've said and given it five stars and great performances and all these great words associated with it nothing negative actually why why can't it win best film why can't <laughs> because the academy is the academy i mean i think it will be i think it'll i think it's safe to say it'll be one of the it'll be one of the five best experiences you have at the movies in the next 12 months that's for sure i don't think any i don't think there's four other move five other movies that will knock it out of there but they, i mean the academy just doesn't reward this kind of film in that fashion um so i'd be shocked if it was nominated for best it picture. might it might brian and the reason for it is we'd rather give the Oscar for best film for this type of movie than that type of movie situation. Oh, you mean then like a Marvel movie? That? Look, if they ever did the best, they were going to do that best blockbuster or best popular movie. If they ever did that, this would be a mortal lock to win mm. that. Yeah. Um, I just don't see anything on the on the superhero calendar that would compete this year with, with that, unless maybe Wakanda Forever kind of blows us away. That'd probably be the only thing you'd put in there because Black Panther was nominated. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't bias it that way. I just, I, it's kind of like No Way Home. Like I left very satisfied, but I was just like, there's no way this is the Academy's going to recognize this. Yeah. Thing. But um, I mean, maybe, you know, Lady Gaga could probably be nominated for the song in the way that Berlin won for Take My Breath Away in 86. Like, so that, and I definitely think if we're talking Oscars, you definitely will get some stuff, you know, we talked about visual effects yeah that that's where you could see a nomination maybe even a win because there's so many practical effects in this which is unusual mm -hmm. um i just mean the best picture best director like that it's not getting i don't think it would get that i'd be surprised but technical stuff yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of cool i, I would say the the batman is probably a harder degree of difficulty for sound i like how sound was used but mm -hmm. this was like a throwback 
but like the throwback to the 80s in that sense of like sound is like a huge just you know we're going to blow out the speakers yeah. you know and, and have you have you just feel that you know for for the better part of two hours yeah um let us know in the comment section below what you guys thought of uh top gun if you've seen it do you guys think it can win an oscar based on what you've seen based on brian's glowing review because that's a glowing review it is it is <laughs> i'm not saying it idly i'm, I'm saying yeah, it because yeah. I, i'm dying to go back and see it multiple times more i i can it's an easy watch it is like this is the kind of movie when it's when you're on a plane and you're sitting at your thing and it comes up on tnt you are going to go watch 10 minutes of this movie over and over and over again because there's a it's lot of places you can do that it's hard to believe that this is going to be um tom cruise's first film over 100 mil opening weekend correct it's I think the real debate is I would never have thought the billion dollar mark was in play for this movie. I would have said 500 million was like a very successful, but like this thing's coming out with a lot of juice and it's going to have a lot of legs because there isn't really a big competitive movie for another couple of weeks. And Tom Cruise movies have typically had good repeat business. Like look at yourself, right? You didn't line up to see it opening weekend, but you are going to see it for sure. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people in that older, like audience our age or older who tend to do that. I mean, I don't think it'll get to a billion, but like it's going to get a lot closer than we would have thought going in. Um, so, yeah, I mean, his highest grossing movie for his career, I believe, is Mission Impossible Fallout, which is right around 800 million. I think that was the last one, right? It was. I think this will top that. I think this will be the highest grossing movie he's ever put out in his career at age nearly 60, which is. He's insane. never won an Oscar, right? No, I mean, he was nominated for Born on the Fourth of July. He was nominated for Magnolia. He should have been nominated for A Few Good Men. That's a crime, I think, that he wasn't. He was nominated for Jerry Maguire. He's never won. It's a lot of firsts. And he should have been nominated for Collateral, but that, that's the other one he, I think, is underrated. And hit. Jamie Foxx got the nomination for that movie, yeah. but I think Cruz actually should have been nominated. This could be the time he gets it, Brian. This could be... this. I, I, I'm just saying, just, I'm just putting it out there. Yeah, I don't... Like I said, I don't think it's as good as... I don't think it's, I don't think it's as good as the Daniel Cathy or the Ron Kovic, but I just said, like, I'm not used to seeing Tom Cruise with real emotional connection to his co-stars anymore i'm more used to him being like i said a stuntman like somebody mm -hmm. who's just defying death at every turn and doing something that seems like this guy really wants to check out on screen <laughs> and so to see him share a couple of the moments in this movie the one in particular i was like man he's it's still in there like with the right director and the right story and maybe this character is just extra personal to him like mm -hmm. he can he can dial it back up a bit um, so I, I really like what he did with the character. I do want to go back to Kaczynski. So I'm, I was going to text you this and I'm like, no, I'm just going to save it and say it on the, the spoiler free review. I'm putting my foot down and saying, I want Joe Kaczynski to direct Superman. I want okay. this guy to direct the next super, the next full on Superman movie. We heard David Zaslav prioritizing the character. Sounds like he wants a new reset of the character. I want this guy to direct the character. And here's, I'll give you, when you watch, so I'm, I was saying that because you haven't seen the movie yet. I want you to watch the movie with that in the back of your mind and say, could, do I want this guy's technical style and the way he's managing his, his cast to direct the movie? And the, so the reason is, Number one, like I said, the movie's cast really, really well. And I get it. He's not the only one responsible. Jerry Bruckheimer, Tom Cruise are part of that. But they nailed it. And I think with a Superman movie, you, as we've seen, you, you can't mess up your Lex Luthor. You, you can't mess up your Lois Lane. You can't mess up your Clark Kent. You have to get the core people right. And so I was very yeah. impressed with this movie. Where I was like, there's not a foot wrong in this movie about who's in it. So that's number one. Number two is... This guy is amazing with aerials. Like aerials in Oblivion look great. The quasi aerials in Tron look great. The aerials in this movie are just sick. So to me, like 
a believable Superman in the sky that looks real, that looks mm -hmm. physical. I think this guy can do it in a way that mm -hmm. I thought Zack was, Snyder was pretty good at it. Like, I think this guy would be great at it. Like it's, I think it's the perfect mix of like the CGI. You don't really notice it. I don't think in this movie. So that's number two. Number three is my biggest critique of Kaczynski throughout his career was his characters tended to be kind of wooden. Like if I watch Tron Legacy, that movie doesn't get to where I think it should have gotten to because the performances just are kind of meh. Like yeah. I, don't, I don't think Garrett Hedlund, I don't think Olivia Wilde, I don't even think Jeff Bridges, I don't think they're awesome performances. Oblivion with Tom Cruise, very flat. I think a lot of the performance, he had Morgan Freeman, he had Nikolai Koster Waldau, they're all kind of flat to me in that movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But in his last two films, so he did Only the Brave, which was the Arizona Hot Shots firefighter movie, which critics love, nobody saw, which I get. That's a tough watch, I think. But um, that movie and this movie, the character choices and developments and pacing are, as I said, they're surprisingly emotional. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the missing, that's one of the missing ingredients to Superman. Like part of the reason I think Christopher Reeve works so well is he's not just physically the part, but he's emotionally the part. His range yeah. from Clark Kent to Superman, you buy in to the whole yeah. character and the portrayal. And I was like, I think this guy might have figured it out in the last couple movies that he can do something that's character driven, but still special from a visual perspective. And Kaczynski is not his own writer. I actually like that for Superman. I think when you if you give one person sole command, it's almost mm -hmm. too much. I'd rather yeah. have the guy who's scripting and then hands the work off and then you you bring in the technician to actually just execute it. And so yeah. I don't know, I'm putting it out there. Joe Kaczynski should direct Superman. That's my pitch. All right, I'm a, I, I'll see, when I see the movie, I'll let you know what I think about that possibility. Um, but we do have to discuss uh, more about the, the Superman <laughs> character yes, a do. little bit later. Um, but yeah, that is our O'Brien's oh, Spoiler free review on the movie Top Gun 2. Um, I'm going to see it next weekend. I'm pretty sure many of you have seen it. I'm probably going to see it a second time. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think uh, of Top Gun 2. Um, remember to hit that like and subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and share it with your friends. And we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report.